Hello everybody, Sam here, engineer, MBA, I'm the investor. And in today's video, I wanna take a look at ARK Invest, Big Ideas 2025. It's a report that is published every year by institutional fund called ARK Invest. And of course, ARK Invest, many times covered in this channel, one of the initial supporters of genomics as a whole, CRISPR, specifically CRISPR, definitely one of the big first supporters of this space a few years ago. And every year they post this big report that covers all their technologies that they're invested in, why they believe this technology, the set technology, is set for success in the following three, five, eight years. Now, in this video, of course, we're going to be talking about CRISPR specifically in the genomics landscape. So there's a lot in this report. I'm not gonna obviously cover everything here. So I wanted to take a look at their genomic space. I saw something and I told myself, you know what, I gotta make a video on this because uh, I think this is pretty big. Now, before I we jump into this point as I'm hovering over that page specifically, I do wanna mention, I'm kinda disappointed with this report, okay? The PR from this report has been probably the most underwhelming, if I may say. Nobody's talking about this big ideas report. It was published uh, just this past week. I saw something on CNBC about it with, uh, of course, uh, a CEO, president of ARK Invest, Kathy Wood, come online and talk about this report and the technologies that they're supporting in the next few years. But I didn't really see a lot of YouTubers talk about it. X.com doesn't really cover it. I haven't seen reports on Reddit on it. Kind of been underwhelming, to be honest. And I feel like ARK Invest had a huge following in 2019, 2020, specifically 2020 and 2021. But I think after the big tech crash and the couple of years of bear market for a year, two years, three years, and some of their technology is not panning out, like of course, genomics, unfortunately, uh, the, being in a bear market, I think a lot of people have kind of stepped away from ARK Invest and of course, there are other reasons too. Of course, there have been other players, other institutional funds that kind of got up to speed. There are retail investors on YouTube that people are following. So I don't really think ARK Invest has much of an influence that it once had. Now, am I saying they're never going to have as much as influence as before? Absolutely not. I keep listening to what they have to say. I watch as much as I can from their content with the limited time I have. And of course, like a report like this, my eyes are on this report and that's why I'm covering it. But I can understand the naysayers. I can kind of understand the landscape here, what people have to say about ARK Invest. So just take that as a grain of salt here. Just remember what I say here as we move forward in this report. So the big piece here that I've noticed is compared to previous years, I remember I think in the 2022 or 2023 report, there was a lot of mention of CRISPR. And it looks like in this report, there's a lot of mention of AI. Now they do mention CRISPR therapeutics, Beam Therapeutics, those companies, of course they're invested in those companies and in those technologies. But I think it's a lot about AI, all right? They wanna kind of focus in the AI story. And this graph kind of tells you all of it. Now, I'm not gonna start covering every single points of every single gra uh, slides here, but I do wanna put your focus here on the middle part where it says AI, ton, thousand more performance at the same cost. So thousand X, people gonna remember, thousand X is a lot, okay? This is not anything to sneeze at. You'd be lucky to have even anything at two X, five X, 10 X, thousand X is unheard of. and. They're betting on the fact that with everything that's kind of converging in the landscape here, whether that's multi-omics, uh, multi-omic tools, molecular diagnostics, AI developed drugs, and of course cures, it's gonna sort of sum it up as a thousand X by 2030. Now, let's take a look at here cures, 20 X more valuable than standard care of drugs, uh, 2.4 X more valuable than best in class precision drugs, so NTLA, Specifics, beam, prime medicine. So there's a lot of focus on AI, right? Their their story is that this is kind of converging, and we've always talked about this in this channel. If you guys remember, I used to say that CRISPR is a tool in the toolkit. There are many other tools, whether that's you can see here from companies like Twist, Biosciences, Illumina, companies like uh, 
Veracite companies like Recursion Pharmaceuticals, they all kind of have their own tools and it's a one big toolkit and this idea of this big toolkit being 1000 x more performant at the same cost guys get remember you're not increasing cost you're getting more performance with the same relative cost of course inflation accounted in for by 2030 that's pretty big that's pretty big kind of you see how it kind of you know, all related, right? Like AI developed drugs is gonna address the small disease population economy. And then of course, you're gonna be able to identify more patients and disease more precisely with molecular diagnostics. So it's very all interconnected. And that's what we mean by one big toolkit, right? So uh, they, they cover a lot of diagnostics here, making mentions of alpha fold. Of course, you can not not mention alpha fold when you're talking about AI. Um, so, the cost of DNA sequences are falling significantly. And of course, this is a graph we've seen in the past. Um, so you can tell here, twist chip, that this is DNA synthesis per 1 billion pace pairs. So you can kind of tell the, here, but the cost here going from 1 billion at some point in the 90s to something less than $100. This is significant, guys. This is 1,000x. This is where you're getting your 1,000x, right? This is an example of that 1000X. Same things on the left side here. So, productivity of genomics analysis has skyrocketed. So since 2001, the compute time required to analyze a genome, human genome has plummeted from 180 days to 10 minutes. That's 1000X, right? That, that is your 1000X right there. These are 1000X put in test, right? Uh, and yes, we know this, the sequence has gone cost has gone significantly down speed has gone up efficiency has gone up productivity has gone up because of all of the above so you can tell your genomes analyzed for a 450,000 budget you could barely get one in 2001 and in 2024 you're getting a lot more than just one right so you can tell that from this graph so another graph sort of covering all of that here so i want to kind of move towards maybe the specific part of this uh, PC. Okay, and there's a lot there, screening. Um, there, there's some good statistics here. And that's what I like about ARK and VAS is they, they use statistics, they use data to kind of project that and make it dollar related to investors. You guys gotta remember these slides are geared for retail and institutional investors, right? So just seeing 1000X doesn't make sense until you start seeing the data, until you start seeing how that kind of translates uh, into it, right? Uh, this is another thing here, uh, reducing development timelines should increase the value of patents and commercialization. Just look at this graph, right? The value of commercialization by patent life remaining. Look at the value increasing right look at that value increasing right so they're increasing a drug lifetime by 30 to 50 percent compared to the industry average of five years emerging ai designs could accelerate time to market by four to five years boost the value 70 80 percent it's big it's big right that's 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 nothing to sneeze at Drug development, cumulative cash flow. Look at this traditional, the black line and the purple line, AI design drugs. Look at the cash flow significantly different. I mean, I'm not going to get into figures, but you can tell there is the start of the development. Of course, it takes a few years. You're kind of losing money here. You're putting cash up front. You're putting in R&D. You're putting in commercialization cost upfront but once you get it at some point there's a mark here look at the ai draw it takes less than 10 years to get that bound as opposed to 15 years ish for the traditional drug so there's a lot of positivity here and you know in in a sense you kind of are hoping that this can even get better than that right to say that even with ai drug designation forecast that it takes about eight nine years before you start making significant cash from it and about 12 13 years before you break even and start making cash i think you could we could do better than that in my opinion we could do better than that uh if this was you know me just making a bold guess here uh i think they're kind of sandbagging this type of graph here of course they're working with what the data they have right now so um price of a cure that rare disease i remember brett from arc invest was talking about that i covered that in a couple of weeks ago i think it was two months ago or something i made a video on that where he was talking about 
the value of a one-time cure versus the typical you know prescription every two weeks monthly yearly cost from that doesn't really cure the disease right the one-time cure versus typical prescription medicine just you know significantly significantly better right look at this the average price of a cure today exceeds one million dollars nearly 15 times the lifetime prescription cost that would be necessary to manage the disease right so they're, they're kind of talking about how this is the commercial point of it right how they see the money flowing through now what i'd like to talk about is here this this piece here kind of you know kind of put a pause in it i'm just going to scroll a little bit down so you can see a little bit more here from the slide here um so cures and accelerated development cost should transform transform the economics of dr drug development now traditional drug development you can see here compared to the cure from crispr therapeutics editas and tla beam prime and you're looking at three billion here versus one billion and has you scaled through with the ai speed up and ai success rate all the way down you're at 4.4 you can tell that now even phase one here you're getting a lot more this is very interesting because that means that your your asset here by phase one in the traditional one you don't really have value in the cure like beam therapeutics crispr therapeutics and tla even by phase one you're getting value and it looks like here with what they're kind of looking at is you're getting more than double 2.5 times the value by phase one and of course that compounds all the way to commercialization now i do want to bring your attention to maybe the preclinical where you're losing money in the traditional drug and of course right now you're getting even 600 million dollars worth and that's going to increase to two billion dollars so what they're kind of saying here is there's going to be more innovation in this space because of those value assets at different stages of clinical trials clinical phases rather in the past it's been known that by the time you get to phase three that's when you start kind of breaking even and you can kind of make a argument as to why your company is worth xyz and by the time you go commercialization that's when you start making money but with the concurrent set of companies with CRISPR companies and so on you're already making company money by inception and it's predicted that in the future in 2030 they're predicting that you're gonna make a lot more than 200 million by at exemption you're gonna make almost 2 billion at exemption which is mind-boggling because that's when you start saying that you can raise more money you can make a better argument about your technology your innovation early in the story and of course with the reduction of time before it gets approved you can amass more money and work on other programs so i find this really interesting what they kind of did here what they're kind of telling you in the story is in the near future, not at 2040, 50, they're talking about 2030, we're talking five years here. These big ideas report is looking out for the next five years. They're predicting here that even these companies, these new companies with new programs, even existing companies with new program are going to raise and make money early on because of the AI driven story right because of the ai success rate the ai speed up it's going to speed things up it's going to lower costs it's going to increase performance it's going to make you more productive and that's a big thing that's something to be noted that is something you want to notice all right that is something you want to keep tabs on this is what we do in this channel we cover the commercial part of it we cover the you know the progress of it we cover of course the data science the actual data behind these CRISPR companies and the programs but we also want to cover the money side of it M the money side of it has to make sense for it to be a success story Tesla data made sense but they had to make sense of the money side and it didn't make sense until late 2010s I would even argue 2020 it will take time for these companies to make significant stride in this space especially during this bear market where it's kind of hard to convince investors even if ntla goes and says we just got ft approved you're gonna see the stock price significantly increase by 10 20 percent and that's because of the bear market i would argue that in a bull market any news increase significantly on the other side of the token right you're looking at 
50% increases, 80% increases. I would argue these valuation of Beam, CRISPR, NTLA, Prime, all these companies, Caribou, they would significantly improve in a bull market. And you can't make sense out of all what we just covered in a bear market because people think negative. People are thinking bankruptcies. People are thinking, you know, not enough cash in the balance sheet. People are thinking about how CRISPR will be side stepped and there's going to be another technology in the new future. This is what people are talking about in the bear market. And here comes our Invest. Say, hold on, guys. There's a whole revolution of AI here happening. We believe costs will go down. We believe performance will go up. We believe these companies will be more performance because of all of the above. And we believe these companies that were even invested right now are going to re- reap the rewards from it by 2030. And I think that is something to be said. There's a story there. There's something to be said here. And by the time these institutional investors catch on to this and other retail investors come in, and of course the bear market ends and we enter in a bull market, you don't want to be left behind, right? Again, not financial advice. You guys have to do what your own decisions. You have to pull up your own research, build your own conviction. But these are the types of things you have to follow. Now, Obviously, ARK Invest is biased. They have a horse in the race for obvious reasons, but it doesn't take away the science behind what they're trying to accumulate here. They were right about Tesla when most people, I would argue 95% of individuals, investors, retail investors, and institutional investors were wrong about. Are they right about genomics? I've always said I think they are right. It will take time for this company, and I'm here for the long run sorry i don't mean this company i mean this landscape of crispr i'm here for the long run and i hope you are as well so as always guys subscribe if you not like this video guys it helps our videos to get on people's homepage. we're getting a lot more viewers a lot more subscribers do like do like guys it's free to squeak it's easy leave me in the comments below engagement does populate more viewership and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching guys and let me know what you guys think about the big ideas 2025 report thank you